Hey everyone, I'm gonna go over the Irish build that I was playing during this season of Nightmares, the Twin Nightmare season. So this is the Frost Iris build that I was messing around with and playing with. And as you can see, you're easily, we're chilling way over 500 billion damage. And there's even more ways to go higher that you really don't need to. I, I went complete overkill to just push limits and test so many different possibilities and combinations of ways to put this build together. But there are so many different routes you can go for her and you will always end up in the same results as you see here. So we're gonna go over the, the path I took to get here. And uh, let's start off with our talents. Those seem most important. So we started off here. Now I do have a pedigree and we'll get to that later, that gives me orders. So that's why we have shrink back. But if you don't have that pedigree and you don't really need it, uh, you just take orders here instead. You need isomorphic arms. This is a very important part of the build as it will double, triple your elemental's cooldown reduction and damage from your weapon. So if you don't have this, you're, you're doing it wrong. So over here, we picked up the damage, some uh, attack speed. We got rid of that one. I'm not too sure why we did that, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, this is the point we ended on for this tree. We're going to move over to Alchemist. Obviously, you need Source, or you're not going to be able to support it with mana. And then Talons of the Abyss. We pick up the damage. Attack speed again, all the way. We got rid of that node. Here we got more Energy Shield. The crit rating. Here we got the Spirit Chance to use Enhanced, as well as Minion Damage. Ending out with uh, Damage Transfer to Minions to make us more tanky. Finally, we're going to end up in Steel Vanguard. Now, there is raise. You can go Warlock Tree instead. You use a different neck. This, that, the other. There's, Like I said, there's many ways to go. We landed on Warlock because, in my opinion, I felt the Warlock Tree was far superior uh, just in the basic nodes you get, as well as it gives us a little more survivability, which uh, my playstyle likes to lean into. My builds like to stay alive. Uh, we ended up with Resistance here. Now, there is a way you can fit... Aura effect uh, into it, you're just going to have to go out of your way, maybe sacrifice move speed on your candles for sealed mana. Uh, so if you're willing to sacrifice some move speed for a big, big boost in damage, you can do this instead. Uh, if you want the move speed on your candles instead of the sealed mana, then I, I went with resistance here. The damage penetrates, does nothing for us, but uh, makes us a little tankier. Uh, and then finally, knowledgeable. Very, very important. Big boost all around. And as you see here, minion damage, attack speed, uh, sealed mana, empower, skill effect, cooldown reduction, some tanky uh, converting physical damage to elemental, since that's our big weak spot for us. Uh, we end up over here with some more stacks, some aura effect, and penetration. And, all right, those are things. Now we'll go into our slates. So as I said, I had an orders pedigree. Uh, you don't need it. All you really need is the Focus Strike. You can go Focus Strike Indifference. You can go Focus Strike Mighty Guard. You can just go plain Focus Strike. The top mods, obviously, you know, who cares? If you can get better ones up here, great. The ones I have aren't that good. Uh, over here is the 8% cooldown recovery and max energy charge slate. This is a very important slate. Ignore the Terra Charge. Completely useless. But as you see, I rolled good stuff down here. The plus levels and the sealed mana, so we kept it. But uh, the main thing you want in this slate is that cooldown recovery max energy. Over here, this is a penetration and our additional uh, damage multiplier through order. This is a good damage boost. It helps you inflate your dummy to make videos with. Um, is it mandatory? Absolutely not. So play around with it, but it's really strong. Over here, we have our plus one, our sealed mana, which we're going to go into why it's at the bottom. Crit damage, attack speed, and our skill level. So that's what's over here. Over here, we have our penetration node of 6% at the bottom and in all skill levels. Now, it's very important we have the penetration on the bottom because we want to copy it with our spark. So we're using our spark to copy penetration. We're copying passive skill level. We're copying sealed mana. And over here, we're copying that additional mod. Finally, down here, we're going to double down on copying this mod. So those are our slates. Now, obviously, you don't have to carbon copy these, but that hopefully gives you an understanding of what you're looking for in your slates. For the gear, we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, you don't have to get the same gear as this. All right, you do not need a double corroded box. Any box works. Just basic 
basic box. There, as long as it has cooldown recovery and empower effect, you do not need double corrode. This was overkill. I did it for one of my tests to see if we could push some limits. You cannot. Unnecessary item. All you need is a plain box with, addition, with cooldown and empower not corroded. All right, for the helmet, ideally, if you're going to use the Fiend Crown, the Fiend Crown will give you a higher single target number, aka dummy inflation, or slightly better boss kill speed. Uh, very, very minor. But if you're going the Fiend Crown route, you're going to want to have the crit damage and the lucky corrosions and a minus 10 sealed mana. Everything else doesn't matter. I will tell you this, however, using this helmet will make your map clear speeds much faster and it will make your city speeds clear as much faster because of the explosions. You do not need this helmet for the build. It's overkill. You kind of need to use a pet or sacrifice one of your other damage auras um, because it makes your guys very expensive. So this is really an option. That's an option. As for Fiend Nemesis, you're looking for the Magnus and Damage and Growth Mod Corroded if you get it, or you can get the Gear Energy Shield, it doesn't matter. You can even use a plane, whatever, doesn't matter. You can just use that and you'll be fine. Gloves, you're looking for Spell Skill and Erosion, as much Energy Shield, and then everything else doesn't matter. You can put more resistances down here. I was too lazy to make a better pair of gloves, but that's what you're looking for. Spell and erosion, everything and energy shield, rest doesn't matter. Fill it in with the resistances you need. Over here, you're looking for uh winter of origin. You want 20% roll. You want to make sure the own no less stacks is lower than the own stacks or equal to, or else it won't work. And uh, then the attack speed is probably the best way to go. You can also go for the additional stacks. Uh, it gets a little more expensive, so decide what you want. Honestly, the main thing you need, though, is a 20% additional belt and make sure the no less than three and own four, or no less than four, own four. All right. For your boots, big things you're looking for are cold skill levels, deflection, uh, cooldown recovery, movement speed. Now, if you want... To balance your erosion resistances in another way, and you can do this, right? You can get tier zero mods on here. You can get tier zero mods on here. If you balance your erosion resistance so you do not need it on your boots, add focus blessing stacks to your boots instead. Focus blessing stacks if you can balance your erosion resistance elsewhere. On the rings, tier zero, we're looking for the growth mod. Most important is a tier zero growth mod. On one of your rings, you're going to want to have a tier zero curse on hit. All right. Uh, we do hit. I'll get into that later. But right now, that's what you're looking for. A after that, you want elemental resistance, tier one, energy shield, at least tier one, and then fill in your missing resistances at the bottom there. For your other ring, you're going to go for a tier zero growth and a tier zero minion damage. If you want to be extra tanky, you can go for a tier zero on your energy shield, but uh, those are the big ones you're looking for. And then uh, an elemental erosion mod, tier one, and then fill in your missing resistances. For your weapon, there are a few ways you could do this, uh, and we'll get into some details here. So you can either go for plus six skills up here, which is probably better than going for the tier zero on the damage penetration. Now this is overkill. We transfer this to our minions, we have 120% penetration as well as the, the slate we have. So we are waiting back to hear from the devs what happens if you have 160% penetration. Is it 60% wasted? Uh, so to be safe, what you can do is instead get a tier zero spell skill and just a tier one on the damage penetration. You do want a tier zero, however, most importantly, on your cooldown recovery and uh, on your additional damage applied to life. Those are probably your two biggest spots on your staff. We're going to finish off with crit strike uh, rating flat number. You want a flat number, not the percent. The flat number actually works out to be higher. And then finish it off with a spell crit damage. Obviously, I whiffed and only got a tier 6. Try and get higher, but, you know, you work with what you got. So those are our gears for you. Over on our talents, we are just uh, going like this. We're going down, up, down. We're making a little V. Uh, read the talents. Digest the talents. I'm not going to get into too much detail with 
uh, what they all do. Uh, you can read them. They're pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty good. For your relic, this is very important. You want to have at, as high number as you can. It doesn't have to be 100%, but as high number as you can uh, on Empower Skill Bonus applied to your Magis. You also want the Triggers Level 8, Dazzling Bloom, and you need to have the fourth engram slot open. And what that means is it's this slot right here that I'm circling with my mouse. Because you want to have this hero memory to who you are calm. You want to make sure you have a cooldown of three seconds. Do not get the four second one. Make sure you do not buy a four second one. It has to be a three second one. Very, very important. And it has to be in this slot. This is your fourth engram slot. If it's not here, it won't work. That's why making sure when you're looking for this, you don't you make sure that it has this open. Don't buy one that has this blocked or you it's it's worthless. Over here we have the always attempts to auto trigger the trait skill. Uh, this will make your life a lot easier. You don't have to push the button every half second or you know, so just it's very very good. Finally, we're going to end with a plus 2 nourishment stacks and an empower skill effect memory. All right. For our candles, we have Main skill is supported by critical strike damage and cold skill levels. Cold skill levels are better than minion skill levels, so you want to prioritize cold skill levels instead of minion wherever you can. And then try and slam a movement speed on here. Like I said, if you want to go a different route, you can get cooldown uh, sealed mana uh, on this instead and then get a different talent. We're going to end with another cold skills, a movement, and aura effect. You could also instead get supported by Grudge, get supported by controlled uh, by other things. I like this one. It makes you move a little faster. It makes you have a little more energy shield. Uh, it's not bad. For our skills, we are going to have Frost Spirit in the main skill. We're supporting it with Crit Strike Rating, Spell Concentration, Elemental Duo, Freeze Chance, and Elemental Fusion. We're going to go to Nourishment of Life. Uh, for here, we have Extended Duration, Rhythm, Mania, and Mass Effect. Now, you want this one in this slot, and it needs a Rhythm. All right, it's very important that this is here. You're going to have Speed Phantom with a Magic Dash. That's all you need. Now, this is important. You have Resurrection War Cry in this slot because this is linked to our box. So this one needs to be here. We're going to put Armor Infusion, Emergency Restoration, Limber Stretch, and Extended Duration. This is going to give us all said and done in the range of minus 30 to minus 40 percent plus the increase from here so we're looking closer to minus 50 percent additional damage taken with this one war cry it's a very big defensive skill we add the limber stretch because it makes us move faster and everybody likes moving fast we're gonna have elemental shock important that it is in this slot because it is also linked to the box to be autocast you do not need mass effect here ignore that what you need is mania and elemental shock over here, we have Precise Elemental Amplification, Precise Elemental Resistance, Precise Energy for, uh, Fortress, Erosion Enhancement. Now, you do not need Precise here, but why not fall out? And Restrain. Any Restrain works, level it to 20. These go onto your mana. Make sure these are sealed on your mana. Over here, we have Auto Defense, Frost Shield, Defensive Layers, and this is going to our life. And we are putting our Frigid Domain Aura on our life. So make sure these are transferred to your life. Over here, we have Precise Triggered When Taking Damage, Protection Field, Precise Steadfish, and Precise Swiftness. Now, Precise Swiftness is very, very important to fit into your build. It does not need to be level 21. As long as it is level 1, that is good enough. But it needs to be in your build because it gives us cooldown recovery, and this helps us hit break points. All right. So there's our gear. We did the skills, we did the sandals, we did the slates, we did the relics, the memories, the talents, and the gear. So that's everything for Iris. Hopefully that helps you understand the character a little more. Oh, we're not going to run that one because we're saving that for a different video coming up. But I will do a quick little 8-4 deep space, fully juiced map for you. We don't want the domes. So we'll try again because domes are just annoying. All right, and we'll put this in for some fun. Fine. Here you guys go. Uh, adds another round um, bubble. That's sure. Red bubble. Why not? All right. I'll come back and do that nightmare later. But anyway, 
So this is the season Twin Nightmare Frost Iris that I've been using for the last two weeks. There's still about three months left in the season, so if this looks like something you want to play and have fun with, give it a try. Like I said, you do not need all the super expensive gear I have. So if you missed that part of the video, scroll back, double check, make sure you're not buying overpriced gear. You don't need to unless you just want to show off like me. All right, guys, hopefully this was helpful. I'm glad you all are enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one.